Welcome back. This is the final part for today's class. So we have already covered phase diagrams, TTT diagrams. So we'll start with CCT diagrams. In continuous cooling transformation diagrams, rather than working with the effects of um, quenching and then waiting at that temperature for a certain amount of time and seeing how the microstructure is being developed, in continuous cooling transformation diagram, we um, produce um, cooling speed, which is um, constant throughout the test, and then we analyze the final result. And by analyzing the final result, we can say what phases were formed and how much of each of the phases we have. So they look this way. So we start with a certain temperature. For instance, in this example, this is the starting temperature, 900 Celsius. And then we select a certain cooling rate, like this cooling rate, which is relatively small, 0.2 Celsius per second. So if we follow the cooling curve, uh, we can see that the path is given by this line. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we can see that um, we are transforming our material. So we have some um, of these phases. This is perlite start, this is perlite finish. And for different cooling rates, like 2 Celsius per second which is the solid line here. <coughs> we can also see that we are crossing the uh, formation of ferrite and then perlite plus the primary ferrite that was formed before. There is also the creation of bainite and the creation of martensite. So this is a conceptual graph. Um, in real ones, we'll have um, numbers that will tell you how much of each of the phases <coughs> was formed. And then we'll also have some reference as to the harness of each of those phases. Um, so let's see a real one. <coughs> So this is the continuous cooling transformation diagram um, for this type of steel. This is a different um, standard, DIN 34 chromium 4 steel. It was sustenized at 150 Celsius for eight minutes. <coughs> so we have the different regions. This is austenite, so I will select a color for this one, and this is the austenite region. And then we have the perlite, sorry, the ferrite region, which is this one. <coughs> then the perlite, and the vinite. And finally, martensite. <coughs> so, wherever you are crossing this region, you will be forming ferrite. Whenever you are crossing um, this region, 
do will be forming perlite. <clears throat> Whenever you are crossing this region, you will be forming bionite. And martensite will start here. So whenever you are crossing this region, you will have martensite. <coughs> okay. So if you are cooling <coughs> um, at this speed, And then you can see that you are crossing the ferrite region. So you will have ferrite. And you are also crossing the perlite region. So you will have perlite. Now, how much ferrite will you have? Well, you have that information directly from the graph, 50%. And how much perlite? 50% perlite. So if you are cooling uh, this steel at this particular speed, <coughs> then the, the end result will be 50% ferrite and 50% perlite. You can work out how, how much uh, or how, how fast it is by taking into account the, the time and the starting temperature um, and the end temperature for that time. Um, because it is constant, or we assume that it is constant, then you can use any point um, in this graph to calculate the speed. In this um, particular example, we don't have the data as to know how much this 180 means, but we can calculate it from the graph. We'll see another example in a moment with the proper numbers, but this is just to understand the first part of the concept. So let's assume that you are cooling it faster than that. So let's assume that the cooling speed is this one. Um, like the one in this cycle. <coughs> so again, we are crossing the ferrite region. So we have 30% ferrite. And we are crossing the perlite region, so we have 70% perlite. As simple as that. Let's use a different cooling curve. Like, um, I think this is a very good example. So I will select, sorry, this one. So in this example, we are crossing different regions, and we can see different numbers here. So there is a number three here, so it means that we have 3% ferrite, and then we have another number here. <coughs> um, which seems to be 10. 10% perlite and then we have another number here which is 70 so we have 70% bionite um, so if we add this up we have 7083 so we um, then conclude uh, that the rest, which is 17%, uh, will be martensite. <coughs> so when you are cooling this um, alloy at this particular speed, then you will end up with a material with 3% ferrite, 10% perlite, 
70% vinite and 17% uh, martensite. If you select um, or you are using a cooling speed, um, let me use this one, like this one. <coughs> Then the, the end result will be 30% binite, and the rest, 70%, will be martensite. So the only way to get a 100% martensitic structure will be for you to select this speed. This is the only speed that lies only in the martensite region. It's not touching the vinitic region. So for this particular steel, you need to be as fast as this cooling curve to get 100% martensite. <coughs> um, this is a more common uh, CCT diagram. Um, for engineering applications. So in this case, you have not only the information about the fraction of each of the phases that are present, but you also have the um, hardness of the material, you have the cooling speed, and the um, hardness as well, but in a different um, reference, which is um, kind of beakers. So these um, CCT diagrams are very easy to read. Uh, once you know the cooling speed, then you know how much of each of, of the phases you have. Um, if you are using a cooling speed in the middle, then you just work out uh, between 90 and 70, you have 80. Between 10 and 30, you have 20, and so on. So if you don't have information for a certain cooling speed, then you just interpolate and get the values. So this is for a <clears throat> 1040 steel, very little manganese, silicon, so it's really 1040 steel. Uh, with a um, grain size of 7.8, <laughs> sorry, excuse me, and um, everything else. So that's it for today. So hopefully you have um, a better idea about um, the phase diagrams, their use, also about the iron carbon phase diagram, their applications and um, what is a primary phase, what is a TTT diagram, how you um, make an experiment to uh, do that graph, and how to read a CCT diagram. So have a nice week. Um, look for the homework that will be posted later during the week. And if you have any questions, then please um, send me a message, go to Blackboard, send me an email, give me a call, or make an appointment, and I will try to answer all your questions. These videos will be available through Blackboard, so if you want to, to see them again or, or to check some parts of it, and you will have them uh, for you to do that. Thank you very much. Um, see you next week.